and you get this picture of a vast and possibly infinite universe. We know that the universe, or very strongly suspect, that the universe is much bigger than the piece we can see. So we have good reason to think that's the case. Whether it's infinite or not is another question. Can you picture infinity? Well, no one can picture infinity. Is the universe infinite? The universe is big, very big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-boggling big it is. Indeed, there are around 9,000 stars visible to the human eye in our night sky. This sounds like a lot until you consider that there are at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy alone. And by our best estimates, there are a mind-boggling 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. These numbers already paint the universe on an almost unimaginably giant scale. But there's still one more thing that we need to know. The universe is even bigger than that. That raises one of the most compelling questions you could possibly ask. One that humanity has been asking since basically the beginning of time. What lies beyond the known limits? What's past the edge of our maps? What lies outside the boundary of the universe? The ultimate version of this question is, is the universe infinite? Join us today as we dig deep into one of the toughest questions in human history. As we look at greater distances, we also wind up looking back in time. The nearest galaxy, some 2.5 million light years away, appears to us as it was 2.5 million years ago because the light requires that much time to journey to our eyes from where it was emitted. More distant galaxies appear as they were tens of millions, even hundreds of millions or billions of years ago. As we look ever farther away in space, the light we see from the universe comes from its progressively younger days. Therefore, as we look back in terms of distance, we can also measure how the universe evolved over its history. The universe is cold and clumpy today, but it's also expanding and gravitating. When we look to greater and greater distances, we find that the universe was less cold, less clumpy, and more uniform. With less time having passed for gravitation to form large, complicated structures, the universe had less massive clumps of matter early on. Similarly, the early distant universe was also hotter. The expanding universe causes all the light that travels through the universe to stretch in wavelength. As the wavelength stretches, it loses energy and becomes cooler. This means the universe was hotter in the distant past, a fact we've confirmed through observations of distant features in the universe. We can measure the temperature of the universe as it is today, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, by looking at the leftover radiation from that hot, dense, early state. Today, this shows up in the microwave portion of the spectrum and is known as the cosmic microwave background. Coming in with a black body spectrum and a temperature of 2.725 kelvins, it's easy to confirm that these observations match. With an incredible precision, the predictions that arise from the Big Bang model of the universe. Moreover, we know how this radiation evolves in energy as the universe expands. A photon's energy is directly proportional to the universe of its wavelength. When the universe was half its size, the photons from the Big Bang had double the energy. Well, when the universe was 10% of its current size, these photons had 10 times the energy. If we're willing to go back to when the universe was just 0.092% of its present size, we'll find a universe that's 1,089 times hotter than it is today, around 3,000 degrees Kelvin. At these temperatures, the universe is hot enough to ionize all the atoms in it. Instead of solid, liquid, or gas, all of the matter in the entire universe was in the form of an ionized plasma. One of the remarkable properties about the universe, at this early stage, 
was how almost perfectly uniform it was. Yes, some regions within it are more or less dense than average, but the amounts that the densest, corresponding to the coldest observed temperatures, or at least dense, i.e. the hottest, regions depart from the average is tiny, about one part in 30,000. That's enough to grow into the stars, galaxies, galaxy clusters, and cosmic voids that we see today. Seeing the universe as it was back then, as well as how it is today, allows us to understand how it grew from that early stage into the one we inhabit today. The way we arrive at the size of the visible universe today is through understanding three things in tandem. Number one, how quickly the universe is expanding today, something we can measure via a number of methods. Number two, how hot the universe is today, which we know from looking at the radiation of the cosmic microwave background. And number three, and what the universe is made out of, including matter, radiation, neutrinos, antimatter, dark matter, dark energy, and much more. By taking the universe we have today, we can extrapolate back to the earliest stages of the hot Big Bang and arrive at a figure for both the age and the size of the universe together. From the full suite of observations available, including the cosmic microwave background, but also including supernova data, large-scale structure surveys, and baryon acoustic oscillations, among others, we get our universe. 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, it's now 46.1 billion light years in radius. That's the limit of what's observable. Any farther than that, and even something moving at the speed of light since the moment of the hot Big Bang, will not have had sufficient time to reach us. As time goes on, the age and the size of the universe will increase, but there will always be a limit to what we can observe. So, what can we say about the part of the universe that's beyond the limits of our observations? The answer is, well, it's complicated. To answer the question of what's outside the universe, we first need to define exactly what we mean by universe. If you take it to mean literally all the things that could possibly exist in all of space and time, then there can't be anything outside the universe. Even if you imagine the universe to have some finite size, and you imagine something outside that volume, then whatever is outside also has to be included in the universe. Even if the universe is a formless, shapeless, nameless void of absolutely nothing, there's still a thing and is counted on the list of all things, and hence is, by definition, a part of the universe. If the unit is infinite in size, you don't really need to worry about this conundrum. The universe, being all there is, is infinitely big and has no edge, so there's no outside to even talk about. However, the idea of anything being infinite is very hard for the human mind to comprehend. Our existence is inherently defined by boundaries and limitations, so an endless number of possibilities is simply inconceivable. However, if the universe is infinite, then there is a probability, however small, that the exact same arrangement of atoms and molecules exists elsewhere. Extrapolating this out further, there would also be a place where those same arrangements of atoms and molecules formed another Earth, with life that evolved in the same way, meaning that there would also be somewhere else in this infinite universe where another you existed. This may sound like stuff of science fiction, but that is the realm where discussions of infinite must be held. While these seemingly outlandish thought experiments seem impossible, there is no way for us to properly disprove them. Some theoreticians and astrophysicists, including Einstein, attempted to determine a shape of the universe, particularly after Einstein theorized that time and space can be bent or even folded. One of the more popular theories for this universal shape is a closed loop. 
Imagine this in terms of our own planet. Up until a handful of centuries ago, people believed that the world was flat, since they could only see the horizon and were unable to witness the curvature of the planet to recognize it as a sphere. On a larger scale, when we look across the universe, it appears flat, almost like a sheet of paper, and there is no observable curvature to it. However, we continue to observe the opposite sides of the universe, hoping that we can recognize patterns of similarity like what is seen on our planet, where a person would eventually reach their initial location if they walked in one direction long enough. Even though we cannot presently see the curvature of the universe, we can make inferences based on the laws of physics as we know them and the things we can measure within our own observable universe. If space were positively curved, like we lived on the surface of a 4D sphere, distant light rays would converge. If space were negatively curved, like the surface of a 4D saddle, distant light rays would diverge. Instead, distant light rays move in their original direction, with the fluctuations we have indicating perfect flatness. Our best measurements indicate that the universe is spatially flat on the largest scales. It's neither positively nor negatively curved, to a precision of 0.025%, or about one part in 400. Because we live in three dimensions, 400 times the radius means 400, three times the volume, or more than 64 million times as much space. If we assume that our current laws of physics are correct, we can see limits on how large, at least the universe, must be before it curves back on itself. But, big as that is, it is still infinite. A lower bound of the universe being at least 18 trillion light years in all directions is tremendous, but it is still finite. Assuming that the universe contains no topological weirdness, like curving back on itself while still being spatially flat, like having a geometry akin to a hypertorus, observations of the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale structure tell us that the unobservable part of the universe must be at least 37 trillion light-years in diameter. However, there are good theoretical reasons to believe that our entire universe whether finite or infinite, is even larger than that. The hot Big Bang might mark the beginning of the observable universe as we know it, but it doesn't mark the birth of space and time itself. Before the Big Bang, the universe underwent a period of cosmic inflation. Instead of being filled with matter and radiation, and instead of being hot, the universe was filled with an energy inherent to space itself, expanding at a constant exponential rate, and creating new space so quickly that the smallest physical length scale, the Planck length, would be stretched to the size of the presently observable universe every 10 to 32 seconds. It's true that in our region of the universe, inflation came to an end. But there are three questions we don't know the answer to that have a tremendous influence on how big the universe truly is and whether it's infinite or not. Question number one. How big was the region of the universe, post-inflation, that created our hot Big Bang? Looking at our universe today, at how uniform the Big Bang's leftover glow is, at how flat the universe is, at the fluctuations stretched across the universe on all scales, etc., there's quite a bit we can learn. We can learn the upper limit of the energy scale at which inflation occurred. We can learn how much the universe must have inflated. We can learn a lower limit for how long inflation must have gone on. Bottom of form. But the pocket of the inflating universe that gave rise to us could be much, much bigger than that lower limit. It could be hundreds or millions or Google ghouls of times larger than what we can observe, or even truly infinite, but without being able to observe more of the universe than we can presently access, 
We don't have enough information to decide. Question number two. Is the idea of eternal inflation, where the universe inflates eternally into the future, in at least some regions correct? If you consider that inflation must be a quantum field, then any given point during that phase of exponential expansion, there's a probability that inflation will end, resulting in a Big Bang, and a probability that inflation will continue, creating more and more space. These are calculations we know how to do, given certain assumptions, and they lead to an inevitable conclusion. If you want enough inflation to occur to produce the universe we see, then inflation will always create more space that continues to inflate compared to the regions that end and produce Big Bangs. While our observable universe may have come about from inflation ending in our region of space some 13.8 billion years ago, there are regions where inflation continues, creating more and more space and giving rise to more Big Bangs, continuing to the present day. This idea is known as eternal inflation and is generally accepted by the theoretical physics community. How big, then, is the entire unobservable universe by now? And question number three. How long did inflation go on prior to its end and the resultant hot Big Bang? We can only see the observable universe created by inflation's end and our own hot Big Bang. We know that inflation must have occurred for at least some 10 to 32 seconds or so, but it likely went on for longer. But how much longer? For seconds? Years? Billions of years? Or even an arbitrary infinite amount of time? Has the universe always been inflating? Did inflation have a beginning? Did it arise from a previous state that was around eternally? Or perhaps did all of space and time emerge from nothingness a finite amount of time ago? These are all possibilities and yet the answer is untestable and elusive at present. From our best observations we know that the universe is an awful lot bigger than the part we can observe. Beyond what we can see, we strongly suspect that there's plenty more universe out there just like ours, with the same laws of physics, the same types of physical cosmic structures, and the same chances at complex life. But as inconceivably large as that entire universe, or multiverse if you prefer, may be, it might not be infinite. In fact, unless inflation went on for a truly infinite amount of time, or the universe was born infinitely large, the universe ought to be finite in extent. The biggest problem of all though, it's that we don't have enough information to definitively answer the question. We only know how to access the information available inside our observable universe, those 46 billion light years in all directions. The answer to the biggest of all questions, of whether the universe is finite or infinite, might be encoded in the universe itself, but we can't access enough of it to know. Until we either figure it out or come up with a clever scheme to expand what we know physics is capable of, all we have are the possibilities. Well, that's all the information we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that like bell so you never miss out on any future episodes. And be sure to tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.